Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is mood and figure. Um, once you actually get it into standard form, mood and figure is pretty straightforward. So the way you determine mood, and that's what we'll talk about first, is by determining what statements you're dealing with. So in this case, each one of these statements listed in left to right. So if you're confused about what kind of statement this is, if, this, if you don't know this is an E statement, I statement, whatever, please see 5.1 because it's a really great resource for, for figuring that out. It's just one of those things that you have to memorize. So moving along, the mood is, right, what kind of statement is this? Some dogs are fluffy things, right? Some S are P, they just use that as a filler. Some blank are blank, right? Always anything with that is going to be I, right? All frogs are dogs, anything with that, A. We just don't have to repeat ourselves by saying, you know, this is a universal statement, universal affirmative, universal affirmative. We just use these letters for shorthand. So we can say A or whatever the case is. So the finally the conclusion, some frogs are fluffy things. So again, some frogs are fluffy things. Some S are P. Some blank are blank. Some chihuahuas are dogs, whatever you have. Anything that you put in that form is going to be I. All right? That's why it's so important that you have it in standard, uh, standard form, because if we'd have flipped these premises around and had them in the wrong order, like we talked about in the last video, then this mood would be out of order. So that's the mood. Now we have to talk about the figure. So determining standard form, right, we talked about the major term and the minor term, but there's another term, the middle term. And that, in this case, the middle term is the one that appears in both the premises. So in this case, that's dogs. So we're dealing with dogs here. Now, to determine the figure, it's all about the relationship of where the, term actually, where the middle term actually applies. There's only four different combinations, right? The middle term could be here and here. They could both be over here, they could both be over here, or they could be over here, right? That's the only combinations. So if you look at 6.1, they've actually got a cool graphic. If, and Menzel's got a really good trick for remembering this. So if you raise your arm up in the most natural way, you'd realize that it kind of goes to this 45 degree angle. That's representative of figure one. Basically, first in the first line, second in the second line. The next easiest way to move your arm is over here, right? Second in both lines. That's figure two. Figure three, if you move it across your body, right, then if it comes first in both lines, first premises, right, if dogs was over here both times, then you have figure three. And then finally, the most kind of awkward way to hold your arm is like that. First, uh, second in the first line and first in the second line. If dogs was over here and over here, that would be figure four. So in this case, right, one, two, three, four. Well, we have a match with one, right? It's first in the first line, second in the second line. So this is figure one. It's really that easy. This is one of those things where it's pretty easy to overthink it, but it really is pretty straightforward. If you're confused by that, highly recommend you check out 6.1, and the web tutor is also really good for practice on this. Uh, really the best resource. Now, if you go to the bottom of 6.1, you'll see a table that outlines all the different uh, arguments that are valid or invalid just based on their mood and figure. You do not need to memorize that. So now we know the mood and figure, now we can move on to Venn diagrams.